Hello and welcome to a beautiful day in Wicklow. So today I'm down with my buddy Paul. We're just down prospecting a river here that we haven't been on in probably, it's probably about a year since I've been here. Now with all the storms we had over the last couple of months over winter time, it's, everything's just upside down. Where there was a gravel bar here and now it's gravel bar over there. So basically we're just assessing the place like we've never been here before. Uh, just in terms of camera, so obviously we have Hero 3 on the tripod and we have Hero 8 on the head. So I'm uh, just going to give you different uh, positions of views. So what we have the setup wise is I have a three gallon bucket. I put some rocks into it so it doesn't float downstream. Then I put my next three gallon bucket into it. It just makes me having to constantly fill up the lower bucket really, really heavy and having to pick out those big rocks. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this sucker tube, which is conveniently still strapped into its holster. Right, so first thing I'm going to do is using the sucker tube, I'm going to start putting a bit of water into this bucket. Again, I'm not looking for a very specific area. Just behind me there, Paul's working a section of the gravel bar on top of clay. So the first thing I'm going to do is say we're going to use the sucker tube and get some gravel into that bucket. Just really just to get the water level right and then we can use the shovel as well. So again, I'm not testing a very specific area. I'm just testing an overall wide area. There's some nice deep gravels there. You can see where the water's changing colour. So you can see here where the gravel changes this lovely murky colour, this orange colour. It's exactly what you want. So again, even though I'm getting good amount of gravel out of here, I'm not going to just work this one spot. So again, just to, uh, to clear these buckets, to clear this bucket, very simple. And we'll just throw it over there. Perfectly fine. So what I'll do now is, because there's a good bit of water in there, I was digging pretty well out of here. So let's, using the shovel, I don't have the rake with me today, just the basics. I did bring this loose box, but only if we find some really good gold will I set it up. Paul has his loose box, we can share if needs be. So again, we'll just take a shovel out of material, pop it in there, that's nice looking gravel. Right, so that is some nice looking gravel there. See the colour of that material changes. Nothing terribly interesting there. Nice few pieces of quartz. Yeah, interesting, a bit of quartz. Doesn't necessarily mean we're on the gold, but it's certainly a good indicator. So I just got to give you a different angle on things. So, with the water so fast flowing, it's hard to find anywhere solid, even to put the tripod. So, what I'm doing is just sucker tubing around pretty much where the, in front of where the camera was sitting, where I wouldn't have been able to curl back my sucker tube. So this is the area where the tripod was sitting. If I was recoiling, I would have knocked it over. And even though it is a waterproof case, I still don't like to take the chance. This camera on my head is also waterproof as well. But at the same time, again, the camera costs 300 euro. I don't really want to put it to the test. It's like when someone says, ah, you can't break that. Yeah, give it a go. And then you break it. So no thanks. Yeah, it seems to be able to get a lot of gravel out of there. I'll just take a little from over here as well. Just for, now see the difference there, look. Look when I go into that. Get that gray material. That's not what we want. Oh, for rock jam. Oh, great. Well, that was a big one. Hopefully it clears by itself. Nope. I can get the pry bar if needs be. Let's see if we can clear that by hand. Excellent. See, that's the advantage of having a two, piece of two and a half in there. That means the rock that went in is only the same size as the pipe. So just have a quick look at the bucket and see how we're getting on. That looks good. Yeah. So we've got about half a bucket there. Let's just go and run it. Let's go find the shiny. So just a little bit upriver where there's a nice deep section behind me here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash off the pan. But I'm going to make sure to wash it off in a part where I'm not panning. So all I'll do is just, very simple. As I said before, easiest way to clean the pan, pick up water, catch it on the way down. Four trails. Okay, that's four trails is probably about the limit. Perfect, and again, back again. Bring it to the front. One, two, three. Actually, you know, might as well just work it all the on. The amount of time, go back, get more material. Just work it all the way on. Right, there you go, done. 
We on the gold? On a mountain of black sand. <laughs> I am indeed, yeah. Really? I'll take, take. Okay, we're gonna continue that scene now. That was interrupted by a passerby asking, what was he doing? That's all, no problem at all. Okay, we're gonna work through the rest of this pan now. <laughs> Paul has his loose box set up there. So if we, uh, if I do find good gold, we can just put everything through the one box. I don't care about the gold, he can keep the gold, no problem at all. I just want to know what's here. Like if I put three buckets and he puts three buckets, you know, how much gold do we get? That's all I'm interested in, numbers. Because then it means at a later stage, I can say, okay, there's some gold there. There's potentially more gold upstream. I'll show you now one second. See where the holly bush is there? It slows right the way down. You might get a Cali sluice box around there, but that'd be better. But there, along there, is definitely a place I'm gonna check. So let's have a quick look here, see where we're at. A lot of black sand. Okay, one piece of gold is not a whole lot of gold, but that's that's good, we got that sample. I'll tell you what I might do, I'm gonna move the bucket upstream and I'll do a bit more of a test. So this is a bit of a slowdown point here as well. So what I might do is move the bucket up to where these rocks are, that's where I was digging last year, and uh, we'll just see what else we can find. Okay, I'll keep belting on the tree this and come back to you in a few minutes when we find some decent gold. Let's go find the shiny. Right, let's have a look at this, see how this works. Probably a bit too much in there, but we'll just give it a good stratify, work way backward, allow the heavy stuff to drop to the bottom, and we can just go one, two, again, underneath. One, two. I'm already having my headlamp on because the sun set a few minutes ago. So let's see how we're getting on here. Any gold in there? Still one piece though. Right, let's try the rest of the bucket. Right, so we need that one piece in there. That's only about two and a half trails anyway. And again, we'll give the bucket a good rinse out. Shake around, bounce, bounce, shake around, bounce, bounce. One, two. One, two. So I'll meet another lad here tomorrow. So I want to try and find the gold, so that when we both get here, we can set up the sluice and belt on through it. So what I might do is go upstream in a second with just a pan and classifier and a circuit tube, and do a sample from there as well. Let's have a look at this. See, is there anything very nice in here? A lot of black sand, and still just that one piece of gold. Just tilt the camera up for a second. There you go. Right, so hopefully you can see that. Yeah, small and small piece of gold there. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna head upstream. So I'm gonna head upstream, just see where that tree is overflow coming out on the river. There's a nice little slow down point there. You probably run a caddy sluice there, box there, or something small. So I'm gonna head up there and do a bit of test padding and just blast through it. Let's go find the shiny. Right, this is gonna be bulk sampling at its finest. So we've got some nice rocks, not getting that one moved. Some rocks in there. Just gonna push these rocks out of the way. No rake, no shovel, just use my feet. Very nice little bit of a pocket here. So I'm right off to the side. You can see here where, just give an overall view. See where it's really flat along there and it starts to get rapids, rapids, rapids. You could probably get a sluice box around there. Nice little tree under here. Down there seems a bit calmer. That's where I'm gonna do my test panning. But this is where I get gravel from. The temptation would be just take gravel from here. Just take gravel from there. Oh no, I'm taking gravel from everywhere. That's why I need to make multiple spots to sucker from. Say there as well. Just to get down to the gravels. Right. We do about, I don't know, five or ten draws. One. Two. Three. Ah yeah. See that? See the way the water changes? That's what you want. Right, I think that's enough for a sample now. That should be the definition of a full pan. Let's have a quick look here. Right. Lots and lots of quartz. And lots of granity quartz. Excellent stuff. I'll push this back into the hole in a second. 
if I find no gold, sure, when I'm finished, anyway, I'll push it back in. Fill the hole back in, so I need to put it somewhere. Right, let's go down here. Relatively deep water. Or it's not too fast flowing. It's not ideal, but we'll give it a go. Ah, oh, that's too fast flowing. Oh, that's too fast. We'll find somewhere even if it is shallower. Right, let's have a quick look at that. Wasn't an ideal panning situation. So, again, this is from what? 20 draws of a sucker tube. Across a small area. Pan was clean anyway. A lot of black sand. A lot of black sand and one micro dot. I'm not even going to try and look, pick, find that on screen. Black sand and one micro dot. Okay, that's not ideal. Right, I think what I'm gonna do is to get the most out of my daylight is I'm gonna finish up the video here and I'm gonna do a bit more sampling along here. Uh, there probably will be a part two to this, more than likely be filming that tomorrow, but it's just how to give you a quick overview of when you're sampling the best, most efficient way of doing it. So, I hope you've enjoyed today's episode of sample panning in a big river. If you enjoyed this, chance that you like the videos I've previously posted and the ones we post in the future. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and sure I'll catch you in the next one. We can all go. I'm more shiny. Bye bye.